Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the latest on how both the UK government and EU Commission are expected to move next on the Northern Ireland Protocol drama as Boris Johnson is set to meet his cabinet apparently at the end of this week to discuss potentially suspending part of the treaty that he won a general election on the back of and freely signed. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So we're back onto Brexit. We're going to leave conservative corruption for a moment. I suppose Brexit is a form of conservative corruption, never mind. Uh, but yeah, lots of talk about, uh, you know, on this subject this week. So I'm going to start by taking a look at what's been said and the political calculations on, on, on all sides, really. So first of all, for Boris Johnson's government. Now, remember that Boris Johnson is acting at all times to retain his position as prime minister. He has no aims in government. He doesn't even want to govern. He just wants to be prime minister. You know, this is why it's so hard to mount a long term campaign against what he's doing, because he's just going to change what he's doing as soon as the headlines look a bit ropey. This is because he doesn't care about his policies. He doesn't care about any policy other than the one that keeps him in number 10. And this is important to bear in mind regarding his attitude to the Northern Ireland Protocol. The government are expected to suspend significant sections of it this month, maybe as soon as next week. But whether he will or will not, I've got no idea. Because on the one hand, he promised a large group of very aggressive Tory MPs that he would renege on the protocol, that he was only signing it to get Parliament, which was not of that mind, to vote for us to leave the EU. Now, given that this particular group of MPs are not at all shy about threatening Johnson if he doesn't comply, you can absolutely see that, yeah, I can, I can believe that he is going to suspend bits of the protocol. But then there's another group of Tory MPs who were fine with us leaving the EU, but not without a deal. They didn't want that. Sure, mo most of them neither understand nor care about the protocol, but if it has consequences to them, then they will care. And, and these could also bring Johnson down if they feel he is threatening their electoral chances. See, one of the problems with getting yourself a large majority based on winning a lot of seats by a small margin is the MPs in those seats with the small margin want to be on the right side of that margin at the next election. Basically, if Johnson suspends a major part of the withdrawal agreement, the EU need to target those MPs, mostly in the so-called red wall seats, but basically the Tory MPs in marginal constituencies who don't themselves have very strong views about Brexit, but do need the trade with the EU for their local economies. And then the Deputy Prime Minister of Belgium last week suggested that the EU could respond to Johnson's expected move by putting the clock on the trade and cooperation agreement. So how would this work? Well, Johnson acts to suspend bits of the protocol. Obviously, he can't do it straight away because the text in the withdrawal agreement related to Article 16 stipulates that a month of talks have to take place before anyone can do anything. So what is emerging from some quarters on the EU side, and I say some, not all, and in line with what Belgium's Deputy Prime Minister said. So the EU could announce their intention to disband the trading cooperation agreement altogether. If the view is taken, Boris Johnson only agreed to the Northern Ireland Protocol so that he could get his eventual trading cooperation agreement, the EU will go, right, if we're not getting the protocol, you're not getting the trading cooperation agreement. And they are permitted within the terms of the treaties to do this, in case anyone thinks that this is them breaking a treaty themselves. I mean, some people may say it's justified. Boris Johnson's going to be breaking a treaty. They're just breaking a treaty themselves. Now, the EU wouldn't have to break a treaty to do this. They're allowed to do it. There has to be a clock on it. They, does have to, they, can't, do it, they can't just drop it immediately. There has to be a clock on it. So the suggestion is that the EU start the clock for it to end at the end of 2022. So come January the 1st, 2023, we have no trade deal with the EU at all. That means full trade barriers, including tariffs and quotas on everything. None of this worrying about rules of origin that we've got to get prepared for in a couple of months. Tariffs on it, oh, you will worry about it next year, but not the year after, because it'll just be tariffs on everything. There'll be none of that awkward rules of origin paperwork. It's just like, oh, it's just, these goods are just going to cost your customers a right load more money now. Now, we don't know that this is what the EU will do. 
I don't even know if um, if they'll even be called to do this because I don't 100% know that Boris Johnson definitely is going to suspend bits of the protocol. A lot of people are, are now increasingly fairly sure he is. But I will also say that I saw another suggestion from the EU side that they wouldn't need to scrap the, the TCA, the Trading Cooperation Agreement, because there are other measures that they could take as well. So there's obviously conflicting ideas about the, way, the best way to go forward. You know, I mean, it may well be the case that no decision has been made at all yet. Because we, we need to remember how many decision makers are in the EU and how they will have different ideas on the best way to proceed. There are 27 heads of government who all have their own domestic issues to be thinking about. There are those in the EU Commission. There will presumably be discussions with the leaders of large voting blocs in the EU Parliament as well. You know, we know that some favour the nuclear option of putting that timer on the entire trade and cooperation agreement. I'll be honest, that would definitely be the most likely to bring Johnson into line. Not quickly. It wouldn't happen quickly. Remember that he will think he's got all the way up until the end of that timer to capitulate. It would almost certainly mean a year of him sabre rattling against the EU and then falling back into line on Christmas Eve 2022, just like he did in 2020. Unless, of course, the imminent prospect of a no-deal Brexit panics the Tory MPs whose economies are about to go down the toilet. Because remember how the markets will react. If the UK looks like it's heading for a no-deal Brexit again, because everyone breathed a sigh of relief when we got the deal. It was a thin deal, but it was a deal. That we could, you know, everyone breathed a sigh of relief, but then all of a sudden, no-deal Brexit comes back onto the table. Yeah, more opportunities for, for Johnson and his mates to, well, his mates at any rate, to short the pound again. But companies will inevitably come to the conclusion that Britain is not a stable place to do business for the foreseeable future. And the inward investment, which has already been hit by, by Brexit, will be further diminished. Which would create a battle between two major factions within the Conservative Party. Those who want the no-deal Brexit for ideological reasons and those who want to maintain trade because at the end of the day, they're not going to keep their seats if their constituents are out of a job. But I could discuss that battle in more detail in a separate video. Not that it's entirely down to warring factions in the Conservative Party. The media and the public will have their role to play. You know, how will they respond to the credible prospect of a no-deal Brexit being back on the table after so many thought Brexit was done? Yes, Johnson will want to make it a them and us situation so that people rally around the leader. It's how populists survive. Make out they are the only one who will defend the people from some imagined enemy. Which brings me on to that outside possibility that Johnson will not suspend any part of the protocol when it comes down to it. I, I saw someone suggesting that Johnson's position is based on constant conflict with the EU. Uh, and it's absolutely ridiculous that this should even be a thing. They said we needed to leave the EU because the EU are bad. We've left the EU with the EU apparently even worse now. So, so why did we leave? But anyway, he, he, he's basing his entire strategy on constant conflict with the EU. That's that much is evident. But the actual conflict on this scale would cause such damage to the country that Johnson couldn't ultimately survive it. Now, I don't know whether that last part is true. The problem is that without, say, Labour attacking at least the consequences of Johnson's implementation of Brexit, if not Brexit itself, Boris Johnson gets to push whatever Brexit narrative he likes onto the public. Yes, there are voices out there railing against it, mine just being a fairly small one, but there are others. But the media mostly covers for Johnson and without Labour taking up the banner, and I accept that they have to be careful. In fact, my next video uh, is also going to be on this subject, um, although I do remain to be convinced that it needs to be so cautious as to be basically silent from the leader. And yes, like, you know, senior Labour shadow ministers are hammering Brexit daily, but that message doesn't really get out to the general public, does it? But in theory, the safest option for Johnson, I, I absolutely agree, is to keep threatening to suspend the protocol, but not actually do it. That way you maintain the conflict. He then keeps us on a constant war footing with the EU without actually firing the first volley. And if there was no great pressure on him from within his own ranks, to actually get rid of the protocol, I would imagine that that would be indeed what he would do. The thing is, there is that pressure. There are those in the party who want the protocol gone for ideological reasons, nothing to do with practicality. It's pure ideology. They won't care about the damage it will do to Johnson because he's not their ally. He is their stooge. 
They will also not care about the damage it will do to the Conservatives because they're not Conservatives. They just infiltrated the party a few years ago. So Johnson is supposed to be meeting members of his cabinet about this towards the end of the week. And, and I'd normally say that, you know, if they decide to press the button, that they'll probably announce it the following Monday. That being said, Boris Johnson does have a bit of a habit of announcing major policy decisions at the weekend to the irritation of Parliament, who are supposed to be told before the press. But Johnson's Parliament is Tufton Street and Fleet Street, not Westminster. But lots of things to discuss here. I'll try and pick up relevant angles this week before we discover what Boris Johnson is or is not going to do, maybe at the end of the week or next week, and the EU strategy. Um, but until then, I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. Until next time, I'll see you later.